In this video, we will review SiriusXM's fish mapping sea surface height anomaly feature using a Garmin display. Let's start by clicking on the fish mapping icon on the home screen. After clicking on the fish mapping icon on the home screen and selecting menu, you'll see three tabs listed at the top of the screen. When the top tab is selected, the fish mapping menu is available. By clicking on the layers menu, you can access the fish mapping features. The third button under layers will give you access to the sea surface height anomaly information. The data for this feature is updated every 24 hours. Press menu to view sea surface height anomalies on the full screen. The sea surface height anomaly feature shows locations where there are changes above and below normal sea levels. Similar to how radar works, satellites transmit microwaves that bounce off the ocean surface and by measuring the time it takes to return, the sea height is calculated. The changes detected indicate areas where fronts, eddies, upwellings, and downwellings occur. Upwelling locations are areas of the ocean below the normal sea level that indicate where sea level is rising. These areas create favorable conditions for attracting bait and game fish, as they often bring nutrient-rich water up from below. Conversely, downwellings are areas of the ocean above sea level that indicate where sea level is falling. These are often nutrient poor and don't support favorable fishing conditions. With sea surface height anomaly turned on, you will see light to dark orange shaded lines and circles. A circle identifies an eddy or the center of an upwelling or downwelling area. Along these shaded lines will be positive and negative numbers. These numbers represent the change in sea surface height measured in inches or centimeters, depending on the settings in your MFD. When the legend is turned on, you can see how the shades of orange correspond with positive and negative numbers on the chart. As a rule, it's best to avoid the center of a circle with positive numbers or a high eddy represented with darker orange lines. This is an area where the sea surface height has reached a high point and will start falling, which denotes a downwelling. Typically, water will be warmer in these areas, but is generally sparse of nutrients and will not likely produce much bite activity. It's also interesting to note that a downwelling produces a clockwise current around the center. By contrast, the center of an upwelling will be a circle with negative numbers or a low eddy represented with lighter orange lines. In this area, the sea surface height is at a low point. Therefore, it will be beginning to rise, bringing cooler, nutrient-rich water up from the bottom. An upwelling eddy produces a counterclockwise current. Using the sea surface height anomaly feature, you can identify the areas where the orange lines with positive and negative numbers run close alongside each other. Finding a line with a number zero with a positive number on one side and a negative number on the other side is ideal. These are areas referred to as convergence zones and are likely to have better bite activity. Note, sea surface height anomaly is best used in tandem with sea surface temperature fronts and or plankton fronts. It's important to note that sea surface height anomaly data is not hindered by cloud cover. While it is not as effective when used on its own, any data is better than no data at all. For additional information and videos, please visit our fish mapping website at SiriusXM.com forward slash fish mapping. For videos specific to your brand and display, visit our marine video library at SiriusXM.com forward slash marine library. And for even more about using SiriusXM Marine, visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash SXM Marine. In addition, please follow us on our social media sites. If you have questions, feedback, or would like to share a story, please email us at marine.support at SiriusXM.com. If you have specific questions about your Garmin hardware, please email marine.support dot training at garmin.com. Thank you for watching.